Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? What's going on, man? Morning, morning coffee motivation, man. I waited. Normally what I do is when I get up, I go, I make my coffee right away, and then I drink me a cup of coffee, you know, make up my bed. We're well, Sean in the bed now because it's hot in here, so I only got the one AC, so he, you know, he sleep with me while we got the AC. And... uh I make my bed, I drink my coffee, I take a shower, brush my teeth and do all that. And then I drink another cup of coffee when I come on and do my thing here. But I said, yo, today I'm awake, man. I said, today I'm awake and I'm going to drink my first cup of coffee, my first sip live on the air, man. So here we go, man. We here. T. Kong. Can't make this up. I see y'all. Thank y'all for coming through. I want to thank everybody, man, um, for showing up. I want to give my thanks and my gratitude for all of the people that have signed up for my Patreon channel. Thank you. I appreciate you. That's where a lot of my content is going to be now, man. So make sure you sign up for my Patreon channel. Uh, it's five dollars a month, man. It's nothing for the amount of content that I put over there, and the quality of the content that I put over there. You're talking about sixteen cents a day. Um, dropped a little writing last night. Um, I put that up. So make sure you go over there and check that out, man. And thank you in advance. It's early in the morning, man. July the sixth, twenty twenty one. It is a Tuesday. Um. Discipline, going for your dreams, taking your life to the next level. Somebody left a comment yesterday on one, I think it was the live we did yesterday, saying that they're trying to muster up the courage to quit their job so they can start their own business. And I remember, this had to be around 1999, that's when it was. I was working in the corporate world. I was 30 years old. I was making $72,000 a year. My base salary was 60, my base salary was, what was my base salary? $65,000 a year, I think. And then with the bonus, it was something like $72,000 a year. So this was in, this was about 21 years ago. I was 30 years old, working in the corporate world, making some good money. $70,000 a year, you can make it on $70,000 a year in, in, in these days and times. You know, I had no kids. You know, I had just finished up my master's degree. You know, I was, I was doing the, um, what I was told to do as a kid. Go to high school, get a diploma. After high school, go to college, get a degree, get a good corporate job, work on it for 30 years, get a pension, buy a house, get married, get you a Maytag refrigerator, a Chevrolet car, and you can consider yourself a success of living the American dream. And I was doing that. But... That wasn't, it didn't, it didn't, <clears throat> that wasn't my dream, right? You know, to work for somebody else and sit behind a desk all day, that, that just wasn't me. I wasn't cut out for that. So I left, I decided to, um, I had had a job. 
they jerked me around, they hired somebody over me, a director's position came up. That position was supposed to be mine. I was next in line. The vice president recruited a buddy of his from another department within the company to come and take that position who knew nothing about mergers and acquisitions, knew nothing about what we was doing, brought him in as a director. My boss, my direct report, who I reported to, and I had to train him. And that shit pissed me off, man. And that was it. So another company recruited me away um they 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 gave me like 30% increase in my salary i went over there and i didn't like it so i said yo i got to start my own business right i was 30 years old and um I put in my two week notice, I saved up. I had some money saved up. I put in my two week notice and I left. I had this plan, you know, I thought it out. This wasn't no knee jerk reaction. I thought it out and I said, let me get up out of here. So I did that. Um, it didn't work out as I planned. I had figured I would close a deal or two. What I was doing, I was gonna help. I was gonna be a business broker. I was gonna find people who wanted to sell their business, find a buyer, put them together, and get a 3% or 4% or 5% commission on the sale of the business. Similar like a real estate broker, I just didn't have a real estate license. As a business broker in New Jersey, you don't need a real estate license. You can just be a regular business broker. And um, it didn't work out, man. I didn't close my first deal until 18 months later. Went broke. I mean, went, went, went broke, real broke. And, you know, I was 30. But one thing I did do, I stuck with that shit. I stuck with it. You know, and eventually I closed. Eventually I got like two or three deals, man, before I started, before I decided to start to do taxes. And, um, you know, that's when my business really took off. But, you know, the, the thing I want to talk about, man, is, is the discipline, man, and, and going for your dreams. You got to go for it, man. At some point, you know, plan it out. Think about what it is you're doing, right? Think about what you want to do. And think about how to get there, right? And then at some point, you got to go for it. There's no other way. There's no other way for you to get there other than going for it. You know, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to, y'all see my fan in the background? Shout out to my fan, man. It's going to be like 98 degrees here in Jersey today, man. It's going to be a smoker, man. Sean got a baseball game later. Um, but, it, you know, it it takes a lot, man. It's not easy being an entrepreneur. It's not easy going for your dreams and having your own business because everything is on you. There's no health insurance. There's no guaranteed paycheck every two weeks. 
There's no paid vacation. Everything is on you, man. And it requires a level of discipline, man, that, you know, you may not be familiar with on the first go around, but you'll quickly learn. You know, here I was 30 years old and people my age, and I was still dealing with the honeys. I was going out every now and then, but I wasn't hanging out. I couldn't hang out and do the things that a lot of the people in my age group at that time were doing going to the club every weekend and spending all this money because I didn't have any money. And, you know, all of my time and all of my effort went into generating new business. I was constantly on the phone. I was constantly on the phone, man. I would wake up. Yo, this is a true story, and this is bringing me back, man. I would wake up. I was living in an attic apartment over in Wallington, New Jersey, man. And what I had did was the company that I worked for had owned the franchise, the franchises of Century 21, ERA, and Colwell Banker, right? And what they were doing is they were going around the country nationwide buying up mom and pop and even some big, large real estate brokerage franchises and then rolling them up into one big company and putting... Uh, Century 21 flag on them or ERA flag on them or Colwell Banker flag on them. So what I did, what I used to do is I used to wake up. Ah, man, this is crazy now that I think about it, man. And I used to get on the phone. I used to print out all of the, if I focused on, I remember I focused on Cincinnati, Ohio. I was living in Jersey. And I went and I printed out all of the Century 21s in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I would get on the phone and I would call them. I would cold call. And I did this shit every single day. And I took notes, man, of, of what I what the conversation was saying, what was going on. Shout out to everybody that's in the live chat, man. I see y'all, man. I would record what we spoke about, who I spoke to, who the broker was. And I got a lot of no's, y'all. No, we're not interested in selling. No. You know, leaving voicemails, not getting no call back. Can I speak to the broker owner? Oh, they're busy. Call back in an hour. Call back in an hour. Can I speak to the broker owner? Oh, they left for the day. Call back. He'll be back at 2. Call back at 2. May I speak to the broker owner? Oh, he's busy right now. I mean, man. But... I was tenacious, man. I was tenacious. And I didn't quit and I didn't give up. And I think my first deal, man, I never will forget it, man, was a dude out in Cincinnati. I'm not going to say his name, even though this was 20 years ago. Uh, he was an older gentleman then. I don't even know if he's still alive. But, you know, we never met face-to-face -face by person, in person. And he wanted me to help him sell his business. I said I would. He, had, you know, he knew my background. He asked for my resume and all that. He did some research on me. He knew I was good at what I was doing. And he he signed an agreement with me, man. And I ended up helping him sell his business. And he paid me. He paid me, man. And this was like 18 months after I had started the business, after I had ran through all of my money. I was dead broke. I had no food in the house. I had no food in my house. I used to go around the corner to the, to the corner store and buy a loaf of bread, man, for a dollar nine, 99 cent. I think they had loaves of bread for 99 cent. A dollar nine. I would go around there and get me a loaf of bread, man, and eat that with tap water, kid. <laughs> 30 years old. I had ate all of the canned goods in my kitchen. 
I had like canned peas, canned corn on the cob, canned string beans. I had ate all of that. There was none of that left. And I remember, man, the last thing that was left in my cupboard or what the hell you call that where you keep all your canned goods and all that. I call it the, the cabinet, but they got a special name for it. The last thing left in there, man, in my pantry. Some people call it pantry. The last thing left in there, man, was a can of cake frosting. I had ate all of the string beans. I had ate all of the corn, all of the peas, everything. There was no food left in my house, man. And the last thing that was left was a can of cake frosting. And yo, I ate that shit. I was so hungry one night, man. I ate a can of cake frosting, man, with all that sugar and went to sleep with some tap water. But, and that's what it takes, man. In the beginning, that's what it takes. You know, you got to be willing to go all out in order to go for what you know. I ended up closing that deal. And that gave me hope, that gave me confidence that, yo, I could do another one. And I think I got one more. These five companies up in Pennsylvania had hired me to, to do a merger for them and put them together. I think I made like 50, what I make on that one? Like 20, I forget what I made. But that was, you know, those were things that came, that those deals that finally came gave me the hope that I could do it. And, you know, during those times, man, those were tough times. You 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 second guess yourself, man. Should I have done this? Damn, this shit, you know, I should have stayed on my job. You know, you go through all of that kind of stuff, man. All of those kinds of thoughts while you're in the middle of putting your thing together. Um but the discipline, it paid off. You know, nah, man, I can't go with y'all. I got something to do. I got to go make some calls. I got to follow up on some leads. Nah, baby, I can, I'm not going to be able to see you today. I got to take care of this right here. You know, discipline, man, is forcing yourself to do what needs to be done right now in the moment instead of what you want to do right now in the moment. Discipline is putting your all on your craft, on what it is you're trying to do. Discipline is choosing what you have to do over what you want to do. Discipline is locking your mind in with the tunnel vision so tight that nothing else matters until you get this done, what it is you're trying to do. Discipline is putting yourself on a schedule, on a plan, planning out your day. From the, from the morning, from the time you get up to the time you shut it down, you should have bullet points. Boom, 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 boom. And you got to get them done. You got bullet points. You got things to do. 
that separates the winners from the losers, that discipline. I'm writing my third book, Stigmatism in My Soul, excuse me, volume three. I'm almost done. No, I don't want to write every day. And my writing style is such that I don't write if I don't feel it. If you read my first book, Stigmatism in My Soul, Volume 1, and my second book, Stigmatism in My Soul, Volume 2, you know that I write from my heart. I write from my soul. And I need to be in a writing mode in order to write. I'm not just writing my books to publish my book and make money. Money is not my, I'm not writing my books with money as my lead objective. I write for therapy for me. And I just write. And when I get in the mood to write, if the Mets is playing, If a honey call, or Sean, yo, they doing this here over here in the park or whatever, I say, all right, I see y'all. I I, I want to do that. I may do that, but first, I got to write. I got to take care of what I got to take care of first. My workouts. Hit that like button, y'all. Thank you for the likes, man. 22 in the building. 21 likes, man. I love y'all too, man. I like y'all too, man. My workouts. My life revolves around my workout. My workout don't revolve around my life. My workout is my health insurance. My workout is my medication. My workout is my yearly physical. My workout is my doctor. My refrigerator is my medicine. My kitchen is my medicine. My kitchen is my doctor. I know how good I feel when I work it. I know how good I motherfucking look, too. Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah, I look good. Because I goddamn work out six, seven days a week. Sometimes twice a day. Discipline. Discipline. Sean, dad, Sean, dad. Y'all heard me? I said, Sean, dad, Sean. Dad, come throw the football with me. All right. I don't be wanting to, but I do it. Sean is on the all-star baseball team. Just about every day, I say, nigga, get in the car. Let's go. We go to the baseball field. I hit him a bunch of pop flies. I make him get up and bat. Throw him about 100 balls. I make him go to shortstop. Hit him a bunch of ground balls. I make him pitch. Discipline. Because I know... 20 years from now, that's going to be the shit he's going to remember.
you got to take your your game to the next level, man. And that starts in your mind, man. That starts in your mind, man. You got to take your game to the next level. And I put up a post yesterday. I put up a post yesterday on my Patreon channel. And the post was... The post was entitled, The First Day After Your Death, What Will You Say to Yourself? Now, don't get, don't go there. Don't get all morbid on me. Ain't nobody, I ain't thinking I'm finna die. I ain't finna die. I got too much looking good to do left. I look too good to die right now. I ain't going nowhere. But this is, this is how I think. And this is why I go so hard. The first day after your death, what will you say to yourself? On your first day after your death, will you be satisfied with your performance here on earth? This is on my Patreon channel. Will you be able to sit back and chill and say, man, I killed that shit. I destroyed that shit. I did my motherfucking thing. I had fun like a motherfucker. Will you? Or will you have a bunch of regrets when you find out that nobody cared anyway and that you spent... 20 to 40 years overly concerned with what others thought about you. That you lived in fear of being judged because you wanted the acceptance of others more than you wanted your own acceptance. That you were scared to take risks and chances that could have improved your life. Will you, while you were on earth, I got to fix this. While while you were here on earth, that you allowed other people who were less than you to influence you and hold forth over your mind, that you had all these gifts and talents that went to waste because you were scared to be you, that you lived a life unfulfilled because you were afraid to be yourself, which impacted your self-confidence to the downside and obliterated your self-perception and made your self-esteem go out the back door and you lived your life, you lived your full life punching below your potential. You better start asking yourself these motherfucking questions and taking a real close look at yourself and get busy living, Sean G. That was dope. That was dope. That's on my that's on my Patreon channel. Subscribe to my Patreon, man. Subscribe for one month. Subscribe for one month. If you don't like it, then don't come back. But I guarantee you, you'll like it. But that's how I think. That's how I get down. You may not be able to be there yet. You might not be there yet. Because you're 19 years old. You're 24 years old. You're 28 years old. You're 32 years old. And you still think that you're going to live forever. Get him, Sean. Get him, Sean. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You know how I know? Because I was 19, 22 28, 32 years old, and I thought I was going to live forever. Fool him, devil. And you procrastinate, and you wait, and you bullshit, and you entertain nonsense because you got all of this time. 
But as you get older, and if you knew what I knew, that's why you listen to Sean G, my young dudes. Where my young dudes in the 20s at, man? Where my young dudes in the 20s at? Hey, David, man, I see you, man. Shout out to my man, David Andrews, man. Patreon subscriber. Subscriber to this channel. Kick me an extra $50 through the Patreon. David, I'm going to catch up with you later, man. Call me on the Instagram when you get a chance. Yes, you do. But as you get older, your mortality becomes real. And you start accepting and coming to the realization that your time here on this planet is finite. It's not infinite. It's finite. Your physical existence. And you look around and you say, man, I ain't never had no BMW. I ain't never flew to Europe. I ain't never went to Africa. I ain't never had no Mercedes. I ain't never had no rental property. I ain't never had $100,000 in my bank account. I want all these things. And I ain't had them yet. And you see other people with them. You see other people doing it. They just like you. And you looking at them like they ain't no better than me. And then you begin to look at yourself and say, man, what the fuck am I doing, man, with my life? Why I ain't a millionaire and he won? Why I ain't got $200,000 and, and he got it? And you begin to reflect and then you begin to get real with yourself and you start to say that it's your fault and it is that you ain't there yet because the opportunity is out here. If you're perceptive and if you're honest enough, if you're courageous enough to be honest with yourself about your performance in your own life, you'll look at yourself and you'll hold yourself to task and you'll say, Sean, nigga, you ain't shit. You ain't doing something right. And you'll blame yourself. And when you do that, the day you do that, you on your way. You on your way. The minute that you can blame yourself, first, you on your way, especially if you live here in America. I've never lived in any other country. I've only lived in America. And for the time that I've been here, I've seen people migrate here, foreigners come here from all over the world to get the American dream. So it's got to be something special about this particular place if people are coming here ashy and then after a few months, years, they classy. They go from ashy to classy. And when you get real with yourself and you and you you start telling yourself that there's a lot of opportunity out here in America. There's opportunity everywhere. This is the largest economy in the world. They just recently pumped in about $9 trillion of money into this economy within the last seven months. There's money everywhere. But if you want to focus on the buffoonery, Get this dope hat off my website, man. Gumbypublishing.bigcartel.com, man. If you want to focus on the buffoonery, 
and the politics and the racism and the classism and the this and the that and take your eye off of the prize. My mother used to always say that, keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the prize. You keep your eyes on the prize and don't allow yourself to be distracted. You can get there. And as you get older, you feel more and more the pressure to do what's necessary in order to achieve what it is that you want. I want to thank everybody for the likes, man. And see, at 52... Goddamn nigga 52, nigga look good too, man. Nigga got, man, what? 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 <laughs> nigga got that motherfucking fed look. I gotta get my buttons right. I ain't figured it out yet. I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna get them right. At 52, I understand, man, that time is of the essence. That's why y'all see me going as hard as I go. And you see my discipline game at the level that it's at. Sean G YouTube page. The podcast was Soul YouTube page. Patreon page. Writing my third book as we speak. Shipping out T-shirts, hats, and books. A few days a week. Taking care of little Sean. Working out, taking care of myself. Dealing with life issues. The honeys, the honeys. I got no time to be fucking around with y'all with some bullshit. I don't got that kind of time, homeboy. Hey, baby girl, listen, you want to chill with Sean G? You want to get with Sean G? I don't play them kind of games. You got to go play them games with my man or them type of niggas that you used to. I don't play them kind of games. I don't got that kind of time. Yo, Sean G, what's up, Sean? Stop fucking around, Sean. Let's do what we got to do, man. Time is of the essence. All right, Sean, I got you. Discipline. Belief, taking my game to the next level, going for my dreams, practicing discipline. Look at yourself, man. Don't look at me. Don't look at the, your neighbor. Your neighbor doing what they got to do. They house look like that because he put in the footwork. Her house look like that because she put in the footwork. Don't be mad. They ain't no better than you. Don't even focus on them. In fact, you let that motivate you. Man, if they could do that shit, I know I could do it. Yo, Sean, what's up? Yo, what's up, Sean? Put the phone down, Sean. All right. Turn your phone off at night, Sean, when you go to sleep so you don't be hearing all them ding, 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 all that keeping you up all night. Turn your phone off. Don't even leave it on and put the volume down and, 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 and put it on silent. Turn it all the way off. Well, somebody can text you at 1.19 in the morning, it can wait 
to 540 when you wake up. It can wait. What did they used to do 40 years ago when there was no cell phone? There wasn't even no voicemail. You had to call somebody on the phone. They had to pick up. They lived. They survived. You'll survive. Go your ass to sleep, Sean. What kind of company you keeping, Sean? Who? Look at them close, man. Why is this person in your life? Are they adding on to your life? Are they an addition sign or are they a subtraction sign? Discipline. You better confront yourself. You better confront yourself. Sucker. Stop being a sucker and blaming everybody else for where you at. And look at the part that you playing where you at. Our current circumstance is a direct reflection of our thoughts to a great degree. Maybe not 100%, but to a great degree. We are where we are because our thoughts have brought us there. Talks about that in As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. If I want to get out of this apartment, right? I've been here five years. Look at this apartment. This is my crib. Nah, this ain't where I want to be. But I have to be honest and say, Sean, you still here because your thoughts have you here. You want to get out of here? Do what's necessary to get up out of here, get you a house, Rent you a separate studio to where you can set up your podcast instead of setting it up in your living room and take your game to the next level. Sean G, it's your fault, Sean G, that you at where you at. I'm not playing with y'all. I'm not scared of y'all. I'm not scared of y'all at all. I don't care nothing about what y'all think about me. I don't care nothing about y'all. I got to keep it real with me. I got to have my relationship with me. Yeah. John, what's up? Stigmatism, man, what's up? Hmm. Shout out to everybody, man, that's in the, the live chat. My man, Ant. Primitive training, man. Shout out to George Gumby, man. George Gumby still alive. I miss my mother, man. I miss my mother, man. I miss my mother. I miss my mother, man. This is where we at. I got to hold me accountable. But I'm working on mine. It's not going to be long. It's not going to be long. It's not going to be long for me. Something good is in something good is happening for me. Something good is on the way. Usually after you experience a real bad situation in your life, immediately behind it is a situation coming that's of equal or greater benefit to you. It's like the Kabbalion when it talks about the swing of the pendulum and the rhythm, and the principle of rhythm. The swing to the left how bad things have gotten in your life 
how ugly things have gotten in your life, how fucked up things have gotten in your life. When that pendulum swung to the left, that pendulum can't stay there to the left. It can't remain there suspended, meaning that your life is going to always stay like that. That pendulum is going to swing back to the right. And as far left as it swung, it's going to swing back to the right the same amount, the same equal amount. So how bad it was, if you can endure it and survive it, when it swing back to the right, that's just how good it's going to be. That's a true story. That's the Kabbalion. Y'all, check it out, man. Morning Coffee Motivation. Thank y'all for coming through. Listen, I'm sponsoring topics. If you want me to deal with a topic, man, um, hit me up on my Patreon. Subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, get the yearly subscription. $55 for the year. Buy a shirt, book, hat, something. Support the platform and let me know what you want to talk about a topic you want me to address, and I'll address it. And I need y'all to do that because I'm running out of things to talk about. So y'all going to work with me, and I'm going to work with you. It's 943 right here in North Jersey. I want to thank all y'all for coming through. Do me a favor, man. Share this link with somebody that you know. And tell him, say, yo, check this kid out, man, Sean G, man. Check him out. I just uploaded a new video this morning, the calisthenics joint to my other page. Who is that? My phone ringing. Y'all hear that phone ringing? I wouldn't dare answer that phone. I'm having a conversation with y'all. I got my big page, got my calisthenics video up. I got my podcast done. I got to do an upload for my Patreon today. That'll be three things knocked out. And uh, we're going to get our day started, man. I'll see y'all here tomorrow morning, man. Get with me, man. Somebody get with me and give me a topic for tomorrow morning, man. Hit me up on my email. Sign up for the Patreon. $5 a month. We're going to run our Patreons up to, my patrons up to 200. Patrons, I think I'm at 114 right now. Let me see where we at. I got 100 and, 115. Somebody just signed up, man. Let me see who just signed up. Send them a message. Who just signed up, man? Somebody just signed up. I got a new patron, man. All right. That's what's up. Who just signed up? T. Kong, man. Shout out to my man, T. Kong, man. T. Kong, I see you, kid. Thank you, man. Shout out to my man, Cheezle. Mobbington, he signed up. So... Let's 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 uh let's let's get busy, man. Let's work together. I'm gonna be uploading something on Patreon today, man. Um, I really want to hear from 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 the dudes in their twenties, man. I really want to hear from y'all, man. I really want to hear from y'all, man. So y'all get with me, Sean G. It don't stop. Peace. <laughs>